Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and today we're going to take a look at a specific operating system. We had someone ask about this, and we figured we'd throw together a little video on it. Specifically, we're looking at the flapper locking system. It was patented around 1870 by a Swede named Freiburg, and then actually developed into a machine gun by an engineer named uh, Yellman in uh, the early 1900s. It didn't really take off until Degturev picked up on the system in uh, Russia. So we're going to start by taking a look at a set of parts out of a Russian DP-28 Degturev light machine gun, which uses flapper locking. We have the receiver here, and you can see there are two angled cuts made in the side wall of the receiver. One on this side, and one over here on this side. Those are the two recesses that the flappers lock into. The flaps themselves we have here attached onto the bolt. Actually, they sit loose when they're outside of the gun. And they look like this. They pivot in this front uh, curved recess. So when the gun is out of battery, they sit flat against the bolt like this. When the gun goes into battery, they're pushed out so that they lock into the two recesses in the receiver. We can actually take a look at that in the gun. All right. So, as the, the bolt goes forward, we have a wedge on the firing pin extension here, and that's what acts to push these two flaps out. So, the bolt is in battery there, and as the firing pin is pushed in, it forces the two flaps into their recesses in the receiver. So like I said, Degkurev designed this system in the 1920s for the DP-28 light machine gun. Uh, it was also then used on the DSHK heavy machine gun, which works exactly the same way, and later on the RPD light machine gun, which is basically this exact system miniaturized uh, for 7.62 by 39. The other common, well not common, the other production firearm uh, that used flapper locking were the German G41 and G43 rifles. All right, so we have here a flat from a G41, and we have a flat from a DP-28. Right off the bat, you can see that the DP is far larger, has a lot more surface area. The G41 is only engaging in this little surface back here. Uh, so right away, you know that the, the DP has a much larger uh, margin of safety on it. Now, the way the G41 works, it has two lugs, two flappers again, on opposite sides of the bolt and they're operated again by a firing pin extension inside, which is controlled by this toe on the, the cover. The toe sits in this little hole. Maybe, there we go. And same idea, when the, the bolt is fully forward and the carrier is forward, it pushes those two flaps out and into recesses in the receiver. This worked fairly well on the DP uh, because it has this big huge extractor and a big rimmed case to pull out. It didn't work quite so well on the G41, partly because of this much smaller uh, surface area that's actually doing the locking, and partly because a system like this doesn't really have any primary extraction. So it, it's putting a very quick sharp jerk on the case head, and uh, that has a tendency to rip off cases when the chamber gets dirty. One of the potential dangers of the small flaps in the G41 and G43 is that if they're not set up very well and matched to each other so that both flaps engage at the same time, it's possible for one flap to try and take the entire load of firing and shear off because it's not, or crack, because it's not big enough, uh, doesn't have enough surface area to safely do that. Um, in fact, one of the early experimental rifles that used this system was the 1916 uh, Mauser self-loader, which in fact did blow up while firing and cost Paul Mauser one of his eyes. So uh, we really prefer the way the Russians did this particular system, uh, although even they eventually came to the conclusion that there were better ways to run a firearm. So I hope this has been informative. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com.